Hey, I want to show you the shift shaft here and the shift lever. So the shift lever basically is what receives the cable function. So in the kit, you'll have the actuator arm, you'll have the components for that to shift the actual cable. So within that, you have the cable and the cable comes through the back side and this shift arm is what is going to move that cable. So this shift arm is here and it is moving in and out with the shift cable, okay? So I'll show you how to put that back together in a little bit. First of all, here's the major problem with the whole situation. Why does the shift cable fail? What happens when the shift cable fails? The engine stalls, it's a Mercury Mercruiser product, okay? Alpha One's invariably all the way back to the 1970s, the number one drive, and, and the R drive, and the MR drive, and the Alpha One, and the Alpha Gen 2. They all have this inherent problem, and it's the design, and the design is that seal right there. So the weak link in the entire system of the shift actuation design is that seal. That seals the weak link. So this is the exhaust cavity. This is your bellows area where your, your uh, drive shaft comes from the stern drive and goes into the engine coupler. This is your water pickup. So this area, when the engine is, you know, the engine is off and the boat's in the water, the water level obviously is probably up here someplace. So it's above, all right, the whole exhaust. So this whole exhaust area, the, up through the drive, through the exhaust, floods with water, which puts water pressure on that seal. Now, over time, rubber deteriorates, plus you have exhaust going here, through here while the engine's running. So as the exhaust is running out of the engine, if it ever overheats, if the water pump gets old in the drive, which happens, then the temperature in here gets hotter and hotter and that rubber starts to deteriorate. Now that seal is a single lip seal. What happens when that finally seal fails? When you shut the engine off, the water level's up here again because the boat's at rest in the water and the water seeps up through that seal and it floods this cavity. When it floods that cavity, then it enters into the shaft cable. And if you have the older style metal cable like this, then water gets in there. And water gets in there, then you're in for trouble, okay? So just remember that you wanna make sure that you use the Mercruiser cable. Don't use the, the in, inexpensive ones that might save you 20 or 40 bucks. You're fine okay. if you buy the whole kit, Get the kit that has the bellows in it. It's an accordionized bellows. You have the lever. It has um, the cable assembly in it. And then the only thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need this new style seal. So first off, what we need to do is we need to get the old cable out of the boat. So the easiest way I found is to tilt the bell housing up, reach in here with a pair of cable cutters and cut the cable in half. Now that's gonna leave this end sticking out. That's gonna be this end, it's gonna be sticking out here. So you'll have about this much of the cable out to the edge here, or maybe this much, okay? So you've cut that off. Now what you wanna do is you wanna unthread that. So now that's where you need your special tool. So you're gonna put your special tool in here and you're gonna unthread this old component of the cable. Now what I have is I have this end piece here. So this cable goes this way through the bell housing. So I have to install it this way because this threads in here. So now the old cable has to have a chase. So what you're gonna do is go on the inside of the boat. You have the other end here, which is on the inside of the boat with this assembly on it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the old inner core and pull it out, take this piece off inside the boat, take a good inner core, like I have from this GLM cable, GLM cable. This is a great chase. These work very, very well. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this down from the inside of the boat and run it all the way until it comes out down here by the bell housing. So that gives you, from the inside to the out, a chase to run the new cable back up through. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take my new cable, okay, and I can run that through here. I can put that inner core on it, and that will help me chase that all the way up into the boat until 
I'm ready to thread this in. Now this is where it might take two people. This is where I can do this by myself through experience, but you might want to have a second person. The secret is when this cable goes through the transom and it goes up to the shift bracket, you have to make sure that when you thread this into the bell housing, that it doesn't twist, which means the cable doesn't get a kink in it in the transom assembly. So once this is up through there, somebody on the inside wants to turn this counterclockwise while you are turning it clockwise because they're facing the other end. So you have to thread this into the bell housing all the way through. If you're doing a bellows job, the best method that I found, if you're gonna do all the bellows, is to take these hinge pins out. That's why you need the hinge pin tool. Take all the bellows out, take the bell housing off, take them all off, take your new cable, thread it into the housing, snug it up. Put a little tight dope on here to seal the threads. You don't have to go crazy, but it's a good idea to seal those up. Perfect seal, Teflon tape, whatever you got to seal it. If the threads are buggered up on it, they're giving you a headache, that's where that 3 8 tap comes in. You need that 3 8 tap, and you need to tap that hole back out. So once you've run the new cable up through there, now we run into this. We run into the problem getting this lever off. You can see that this screw has been rounded off. Somebody's tried to take it out. Good luck. Second little trick for you, okay? Turn the lever so it's parallel to you like this. You need a good, sharp cold chisel, all right? Make sure it comes to a nice razor edge. Don't have a dull one. Take the cold chisel, put it at about a 45 degree angle in line with that screw. Give it a couple of hits with a ball peen hammer. No claw hammers here, you know? You're not a carpenter, you're a technician, so ball peen hammer, all right? Hit this, strike it a couple of times, and what will happen is this will split in half. This is aluminum. And what it'll do is it will split this lever right in half. Don't try to fight with that screw because you'll never get it out. That's why you need a new lever, okay? Once that's out, you're gonna pull this arm off, take this out, and then take a 3 8 about a six inch to a nine inch extension, 3 8 drive extension. It fits perfectly, okay, to drive the bushing and the seal out. So the 3 8 extension will fit right down through here and just pound that bushing out and pound the seal out if you have the original ones. If you have this, this does fail. You can drive this back out the same way. So now with all of this out of the way, what you need to do is you need your special little homemade tool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my new seal and I have to put it back up inside the housing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bolt has to come down through here and then take the seal, all right? Put a little grease on here, take some grease, pack it in the seal, and because you have back to back, there's two seals in here. And then with this through the hole, reach in here like this, don't push it through because you'll ruin the seal. Thread it through the seal, okay? So you wanna thread it all the way up until it's on that smooth part. Now, if you use a shank bolt, and I just didn't have one, maybe this long, okay? It has an unthreaded shank, that's even better but you do want to thread this through because if you try to push it through, you're going to pull the springs out and you're going to ruin these seals. So thread it through. Won't hurt the seal at all. Okay, I've done this many times. Once that's threaded through there, you need a couple of big washers that are going to fit that. So as such, got it? So a couple of washers, spacers, and a nut. Now that is through the housing. Simply push this up into the housing Tighten the bolt up until this is bottomed out. So now you have this new seal is in the housing. So this is the fix for this inherent problem. That little $20 part is the fix. Once that seal's installed, again, take some more grease, your finger, pack it in there, hold the other end, pack the grease in there, slide the shaft up through, put your arm in, put your new arm in with your screw, put it down through, there's a hole in that shaft, and just snug that up. You don't have to crank it in there real tight. Now you're ready, you're good to go. You've got that already new seal installed, the cables run through, threaded into the bell housing, now you have to put the ends on.